Hello and welcome to this episode of Applications TV. I'm Peter Vaughan, one of the Applications Engineers here at Power Integrations. So today I thought I'd uh, show you a quick tip on how to measure the resonant frequency of a transformer, how to estimate the transformer primary capacitance, and also the transformer uh, leakage inductance. But before we get started taking some measurements from a board, let's do a quick review of some uh, circuit theory. So if I have a uh, simple, well, let me get a pencil that works. Handy backup pencil. If we have a capacitor inductor circuit like this, then the resonant frequency of this is given by this expression. 1 over 2 pi, the square root of the value of the inductance multiplied by the capacitance, where this is uh, L and this is C. And what I mean by resonant frequency is probably best illustrated by a, a little example. So if we had a capacitor charged to some voltage uh, connected in series with a switch to an inductor, If we were to close the switch, what we would see if we looked at the voltage across the capacitor is a sinusoidal oscillation, where the frequency of the oscillation is given by the resonant frequency expression. Now in practice, a real circuit always has some non-ideal impedance, so basically a resistor, so what we would actually see is a damped sinusoid waveform which would decay down to zero as the energy is dissipated in the resistor but the actual frequency of oscillation would stay the same. So having run through that, let's uh, go to the oscilloscope and the board, take some measurements and we'll come back and see how this fits into today's episode. What I have here is uh, an EP uh, 91 reference design board which uses tiny switch 3 and I've got my usual collection of uh, current probes and uh, scope probes hooked up to it and the two that we're going to use today actually really the one we're going to use today is the drain voltage waveform so I have here a times 100 probe connected to the drain of the tiny switch 3 now I'm ready to bring up the power supply and make sure the variax turned off turn it on uh, bring up the power supply okay there we go so what I'm looking for on the oscilloscope is a discontinuous waveform and well actually the first one I've shown here happens to be continuous so you see here there's no ringing at the point that the MOSFET turns on so the output diode is conducting for this whole period same thing with the next uh, cycle so if I uh, see I can see it I can see it's going to be difficult oh there we go and this one we can see that the output diode stopped conducting and we see the relaxation ring. The reason we see the relaxation ring is the switching cycle here was skipped. This particular device, the Tiny Switch 3, uses on off control to regulate the outputs. The other way of uh, ensuring you see the relaxation ring is to reduce the output load. So as I reduce the output load, most of the cycles end up being skipped and we see the relaxation ring. So let me stop the oscilloscope there. What I want to do is measure the frequency here. And to do that, I'm going to turn some cursors on. And let's move those over. First one done. And there's a second. I don't need to be too accurate. The scope is telling me that this frequency is 526 kilohertz. So let me just make a note of that. And now we can move on to measuring the next frequency for this example, the leakage inductance ring here. So this ring occurs at the point that the clamp diode stops conducting. But just to see it a little bit more clearly, I'm going to shorten the time base. I'm going to stop the oscilloscope and I'm going to move the cursors to measure that frequency. So it looks to be approximately 3 megahertz. So I'll make a note of that as well. Okay, so having measured these two 
uh, frequencies from the oscilloscope waveforms, we can go ahead and use that information to estimate both the primary capacitance and also the leakage inductance value. So let's go back to, uh, to our pad of paper and do those calculations. We've basically measured the resonant frequency of the transformer. Why is that useful? Well, if you uh, see here, I've drawn a simplified flyback schematic. And during the relaxation oscillation, the switch is open. There is no current flowing in the clamp and there is no current flowing in the output. So the output diode is also off. So if we simplify this schematic, what we actually have is simply an LC network where the inductance is the primary inductance and the capacitance is the stray capacitance of the primary winding. Well, knowing that information and having measured the resonant frequency, we can go back to our expression from earlier where the resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi root LC, and we can calculate the value of the stray capacitance of the primary. So if you rearrange this expression, we end up with the capacitance is equal to 1 over 2 pi FR squared divided by L. Now, we've already measured the resonant frequency. We know the uh, value of the primary inductance is 1.1 millihenries. So if I substitute those values into this expression, we end up with 1 over 2 pi times 526 kilohertz squared divided by 1.1 millihenries, which calculates as 82 picofarads. In reality, this value is usually a little bit higher than the real transformer primary inductance because this value includes all drain node capacitances. So in addition to just the stray capacitance across the primary, it includes all other sources of capacitance that are reflected onto the drain node. So if I actually take the transformer that we've just measured in the board and measure the uh, resonant frequency and from that calculate the value of the capacitance, it comes out slightly lower. And in this case, it came out to be 65 picofarads. However, without access to an LCR meter, this is a very useful way of estimating the value of the primary capacitance. Now that we've used the relaxation ring to estimate the value of the primary capacitance, we can go ahead and do something very similar to estimate the value of the leakage inductance. Just after the clamp network has stopped conducting, we measured the frequency of ringing. Well, while that is occurring, what we essentially have is we have the primary inductance we have a leakage inductance term and we have the primary capacitance. So we have a similar LC network. Now you might think that the primary inductance would become part of this LC network, but because the output diode is conducting, during the period where we see the leakage inductance ringing, the voltage across this inductance, the primary inductance, is fixed and is equal to the VOR, which is set by the turns ratio of the transformer. So the ringing is only due to the leakage inductance, which we'll call LL, and the primary capacitance, which is CP. Now we've just seen that our estimate for the primary capacitance was 82 picofarads. And we can use the, the same resonant frequency expression to calculate or estimate the value of the leakage inductance. So in order to do that, we're going to end up with our LL is equal to 1 over 2 pi FR squared divided by the value of the primary capacitance. And if I substitute in there, we basically end up with 1 over 2 pi times 3 megahertz 
whole squared divided by 82 picofarads. And that calculates to be 34 microhenries. As before, I've pre-measured this transformer and the value I got from our impedance analyzer was 32 microhenries. So we can see here that this is actually a very, very close estimate and a very useful way of estimating the value of the leakage inductance. So that concludes today's episode. I hope you found our quick tip on uh, estimating primary capacitance and leakage inductance useful. As always, check our website for further episodes and also to request topics or subjects you'd like us to cover in future episodes. So, thank you very much.